Maybe yes. Deep to left field. Martin back at the track and the wall. And Mark Hanna gives the Tigers an early 1-0 lead. Boy, I love this. I'm not going to give you a chance to call this one for a <laughs> strike. You see that starting to come in, pulls his hands in, gets the barrel right to the ball, and get it up in that wind and see how far it can go. Again to center, and again down for a hit. Carpenter's going to try for third. Buxton's throw is there, and Farmer applies the tag, and he's out. So Carpenter tried to go to third. Buxton said, bad move. Byron all smiles, leaving the field. To shortstop, Javi Baez plunges on top of it and throws out Farmer. That is Farmer refuted. What a play. That good defense continues for the Tigers. Slightly open stance up on his front toe. Lopez delivers, line drive, caught by Correa. Well, Javi Baez stole a hit from Kyle Farmer, and Carlos Correa says anything you can do, I can do better. Both shortstops showing some range tonight. Baez, nice play to end last inning. Carlos Correa, almost that right there. Quick first step. Knox drops his former team. The one-two pitch. Strike three called. So Scoble strikes out Correa, and the Twins lead two. Significant news, Willie Castro is now playing. He is in at short as Carlos Correa, who struck out to end the top of the inning, is not back out defensively for this half inning. Yeah, a little check swing. That's oblique territory. We did not appreciate it. <laughs> One, two for Urshela. On the ground to shortstop. Castro is not going to get two. Will he get one? No, he will not. And the Tigers make it 2 nothing still with just one out. That's a tough play. Yeah, they had the infield in the previous batter. This time they're going back for a double play, but Gio Urshela kind of tops it. Gets it right to Willie Castro. He dropped a bat with the fastball. 0-2 to Riley Green, stroke to left center field, up the alleyway, and off the wall. Here comes Rodgers. No throw to the plate. Riley Green attacks, and the Tigers have a 3-0 lead. Oh, one. Broken bat grounder. It's going to get through anyway. A bleeder that turned into firewood gives the Tigers a 4 0 lead. Veerling to right field. Margot isn't going to get there. It's an RBI single for Matt Veerling. And closing in on a kill shot, A.J. Hinch of the Tigers. That's why. It's because of the timeout by Canna. Right side, base hit. Tigers are piling on. Joey Cora, the wave around for Rodgers. And it is 6-0. Two strikes. Save themselves for tomorrow. Here's a cue shot past the mound towards second base. Long way to go for Julian. And everybody's safe again. A croquet shot from Torque. And it's 7-0 Tigers. Exit velocity. I, I remember the kids collecting the, the cards. You're going to catch them all, you know. In the air left center field. That ball smoked by Veerling up the alleyway. Eventually run down there. But here comes Perez first major league time crossing the dish for that young punch fair down the right field line so no shutout tonight as Jeffers will score farmer going into second base he slides in safely and there is his first base hit of the year he's got a batting average picked up the first hit the Twins off Scooble, infield hit, drives one to left center field. That'll fall for a base hit. Farmer's got the green light. He will head home. He will score standing. So Julian picks up his fourth RBI. And the Twins are down eight.
How about a good slider right here on the outside part? There it is. Okay, strike three. There it is. And now three and one. And he walked him, so he'll take that. And the Pirates will take the lead. One to nothing. Sanchez and the Phillies know that he should be back, and they should be back in the dugout after that comebacker by Taylor. He was in on his hands, and Reynolds coming in to make a sliding grab. Brian Reynolds is there. One out. That ball looked like it was going to get down. And Brian Reynolds does a nice job closing the gap. Got a little bit of wind blowing to the right center. Not a ton, but I think that was just enough to keep that ball in the air for an extra half second. And chops this to deep. Oh, a slip by Turner. And the Pirates take a 2-0 lead. <laughs> Turner tried to plant his foot and slipped. You know, talked about it, the grass is a little wet. He went to plant his foot and there was nothing there. He went straight down and the ball just bounced right over the top of him. Topper back toward the mound. Falter falters as he flips it wide at first after juggling it. Marsh scores. It's a 2-1 game. I don't think if Valley Falter comes up with that clean, he gets stopped. I thought Davis was going to run out there and try to get it, but then Bailey, you see, he just really looked like he took his eye off of it there for a second, and then after he went to the ground, no chance of getting Bryson Stott. Gets away. Oh, my goodness. And off of Real Muto's wrist, he is hurt. JT Real Muto is hurt. The run scores, and now heading to first base, Hayes. <laughs> it must have been called a strike. Hayes is surprised. It was called a strike. It'll be a strikeout wild pitch. And there goes the runner Triolo. The line drive base hit into left field for Henry Davis. And Jared Triolo going to be waved home by Rebello. He'll score without a play. And Henry Davis, a double and an RBI. And the Bucks take a 4 1 lead. Oh, and that's the hit you were looking for, especially from Henry Davis. Give you a little breathing room with Jared Triolo on the move in a 3-2 count. Lined up the middle, a base hit. This will bring home another run. Brian Reynolds rips it into center field. 5-1 Bucks. What a terrific at bat for Brian Reynolds right there to bring in a, another much needed run going in the eighth and ninth for the Pirates. Works his way to a 3-2 count. Gets a hanging split. Just shoots it right back up the middle. Lined into right center field. And coming on to make the diving catch is Brian Reynolds. What a play by B. Ray. Two outs. Oh, what a play, B. Ray. Ball four, forces it around. It's a 5-2 game. Pops it up. Taylor coming in and squeeze it and raise the Jolly Roger. And a real feel-good win and a real feel-good save for the Renegade. And Bailey Falter, the former Philly, gets his first win of the year. will break. There they go. Here it is. And ball four, and that was a takedown. Boy, that's that's a nice at bat by Yandi right there to draw that walk and force home a run. You're in it's such a, an, an uncomfortable. See it deep and hit it to right. To the backstop, here comes Lee, and this game is tied. The Giants ground attack, or do that in full effect. He lines it toward right center field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Giving Ramirez a chance to run around third on his way to the plate. He will score. Throw to third. Safe there. Right there, they're saying that that foot is in front of the bag. Matt Chapman. And they're going to call him for interference. The Rays take a two to one lead and will continue the inning. This is a long run for Conforto. And he dives and makes the catch. A terrific play by the Giants left fielder. And that'll end the inning. Oh, 
Shea's going to get strike three calls, so they're not happy. Bob Melvin, the manager, started to come out, and he was ejected by the plate umpire. Gave up one hit. Now the 0-2. And a fly ball, short left to Rosarena's. There, the Rays win it. Fairbanks. This is popped up by a dumps. Shallow center field. Henderson drifting back. He waved everybody off and look out. Nearly collided full on with Cedric Mullins, who bails him out. That was a little adventurous. Here's Gary Sanchez looking for his first hit of the season. Sanchez drills one. Deep left field. That is trouble. It is gone. That's the way to start your account. A two run homer for Gary Sanchez, and the Brewers are up two zip. I don't care how far you move the fences back. Scary Gary was going to hit it over it. 111 miles an hour in the first home run of the season for Gary Sanchez as a Brewer. I think he's gone. There he, there goes. he goes. And this is lashed to right for a base hit by Ortiz, dribbling all the way to the corner. Monasterio being waved around third. Ortiz digging for three. The throw, not in time. RBI triple for Joey Ortiz, and the Brewers lead 3-0. That's got to feel so good for Joey Ortiz against his former club. First at bat that he gets a chance, and he was down two strikes, grinded away, flicks a pitch that's away from him, and up where that's where Wells wants it and gets rewarded. Might be a developing situation here for the Milwaukee Brewers. Christian Yelich was due up to lead off the inning, but this is Blake Perkins instead. The two of us, Bill, you didn't notice anything in the field or the first time that Yelich was up. He had a pretty hard hit ball for a single. We just uh, got word from the Brewers and their PR staff lower back discomfort for Christian Yelich. That's why he's been lifted from the game. Reese Hoskins here, and Hoskins drills one to left. That'll get a run home. Two out single for Hoskins to drive home at Thomas, and it's 4 0 Milwaukee. Yeah, for Wells, the, the slider again is just not sharp enough with two strikes to get the out. And for Reese, he's already two for two tonight. And that extra 90 feet Willie Adamas took, he probably would have a bang bang play at the plate. But it's been a really incredible start. Kowser drills one. Deep right field, way back there, and gone! He's got another one! Baltimore is on the board. Third home run in a two-game span for the rookie. Well, nobody's hit a slider off Freddie Peralta this year, and this is the first hit, and it's a homer. Another two-strike count. Hit a double in the first in a two-strike count. This, another extra base hit. That's now nine on the season. This ball is lifted to left. Hayes will watch it go. Willie Adamas clears the fence this time. A three-run homer, and the Brewers are out to a 7-1 lead. High fly ball, deep right field from Contreras. Drifting back is Kowser, and that ball is gone. Third home run of the night for the Brewers. Contreras goes yard, and Milwaukee is routing Baltimore tonight, 9-1. And the Brewers have legitimately rolled out the barrel tonight. Pat Murphy has challenged Contreras to be one of the league's best catchers. That's a special player. Look out here. A conversation between Willie Adamas and James McCann didn't take much to spark the big time disagreement. Bench is empty, bullpen's empty. This is not the first time Milwaukee has gotten into a tiff with an opponent this year. Uh, James McCann, he's sticking up for his Orioles team. I'm not sure if he didn't took exception to Willie Adamas on a homer, but Willie and the Brewers are not going to back down. Everybody's still milling around. And Pat Murphy and Brandon Hyde are talking at home plate too, trying to sort it out. This is why I took offense to it. Here it is. At the top it said, bottom of the tower. Brandon Hyde was quickly in between the two. 
if you're a Brewers fan, you got to love the edge with which this team is playing the first month of the season. I don't know if you need benches to clear for the second time in a three week span, but it's clear they've got a chip on their shoulder. Freeland crowns one through the right side for a base hit. Adamas around third. Here comes the play at the plate, and he is safe. Freelich is going to take off for second on the throw. It's a 10 spot for the Brewers. Uh, we might have had a chance for some big time fireworks at home plate on this throw because Adamas is coming in sliding hard. Here it is. He might get a play at the plate. Adamas gets in there, looks at James, and then walks off. As much scoring as they put together. Mateo going back on this ball, and he crashes into the wall, hangs on to make the catch. Jorge Mateo, risking life and limb, takes an extra base hit away from Reese Hoskins. Wow, what a play from Mateo. Just a year ago, he was almost the everyday shortstop for the Orioles. Now they're asking him to play all over the place. And as a infielder, to go to the outfield and do this, man, what a play. What an athletic play. No regard for your body. Or you just didn't know the wall was that close. <laughs> Would be due up fourth. Ground ball through the right side and another hit for Joey Ortiz. And another RBI. A three hit night for Joey Ortiz against his former team. Uh, it has to feel so good. I told you, revenge ABs are the best. And for Joey Ortiz, I mean, this is, that's not a bad pitch. Jacob Webb puts it where he wants it, down and away. Ortiz just does a good job of hitting. Ground ball to short. Willie Adamas, one of the central figures in this game tonight to put it away. And the Milwaukee Brewers with a rout in game one of this three-game series against the Baltimore Orioles, an 11-1 final at Camden Yard. This one is into right center for a base hit. The shed around third. He'll score easily. Turner comes around to third. It's an RBI single for Biggio and an early one to nothing lead. Uh, Cameron's in a good spot, as you mentioned, Dan. He's really swinging with a lot of confidence right now. Bo got a base hit, had a stolen base, and comes around third to score easily. And how about a run in the first inning? And that ball lined to deep right, and it's going to get down. It's going to tie up the game at least. Diaz will score. Montero will get a stop sign. RBI double for Brendan Rodgers. And that is his first ribby of the year. And that ball was well struck. Yeah, he gets another fastball. All three hits this inning from the, uh, the Rocks are on fastball. This one's elevated. He does what you're supposed to do. Double in the gap. Tie up the ball game. a hold of one hits it to right field did he get enough of it he sure did first home run of the season for Dalton Varsho and it's 2-1 Blue Jays Dalton Varsho went up there with a good idea what he wants to hit and he got his pitch down that fastball down out over the plate that's in his wheelhouse and he didn't miss it he hit it high and deep into the seats in right Thing about that splitter that we've talked incessantly about, any count, Gosman will throw it. He threw it there, and it's pulled through the right side. Another base hit for McMahon. This is going to tie it up. Matt Long striding towards second is in with a stand-up double. Then he gets that split that's way down, but what does he do? Let's it travel, doesn't try and do too much, slows that swing down, and just takes the hit he's given. This ball scorched to center field. McMahon kind of turned back to make sure it got past Bichette. He's coming home and he's going to score. Watch Mack in the lower right-hand corner. But he does a good job. Once he decides to go, Warren Schaefer can see Kiermaier's not to the ball yet. This ball's well hit to right. This is going to get down. The Rockies are going to take a 4-2 lead. A Nolan Jones double brings home Elias Diaz. It's been a while, but the Rockies enjoying this trip so far to Toronto. Yeah, that had to feel really good for Nolan Jones. Been swinging and missing a little bit. That one's elevated, letter high. Pulls the hands in, clears the hips, gets a stake. 
And this ball's well hit left center field by Bryant. Kiermeyer's not going to get there. Off the wall, one run is scored. McMahon around third. He's coming home. He'll score standing up. Two run double, Chris Bryant. And the Rockies lead it 6-2. to two. What a big swing of the bat on this misplaced slider. And Chris Bryant extends the Rockies' lead to four. Another one of your former teammates, Brad Hopp. Two of the nicest human beings I know. Oh, oh boy. Goodness. Take a good look. You won't see this for long. That got out in a hurry. First of the year for Nolan Jones, 7-2 Colorado. 112 off the bat. That is a, in honor of Masters weekend, a Jack Nicholas one iron. I love seeing the guy smile, getting an elevated fastball from Espino and just absolutely dropping the barrel on it. Good to see from Nolan, Chris Bryant. The guys are starting to have some fun down there. This ball well hit to left and deep, and that is number three for Tovar. On an 0 2 pitch, no less. Make it 8 to 2, Colorado. Time to go skiing. Hung curveball, belt high. You hang it, we bang it. It's his first home run on an 0 2 pitch in his young career. 2 0. How about six straight innings? Into the left field corner. Rogers will score easily. Tolia at the third. Tolia will get a stop sign. It's a double for Brenton Doyle. Homers and doubles all night long. 16 hit road attack for the Rockies. 9 2. Brenton keeps the hands back. Barrels it out in the left field for his second hit of the day. Sixth RBI for Brenton. Field in second and third. Chance to do more damage for Tovar. High fly ball to deep left. Tolia will tag. Varshu underneath the baseball. Here comes a throw to the plate. It's on line. Safe. Underneath the tag is Tolia. And the Rockies have hit double digits. And this should get the job done. Kiermeyer circles. He's going to let loose. <laughs> And throw it as far as he can. He's got a big arm, but it's a sack fly. Another run for the Rockies. Cave drives in Brendan Rodgers. Run number 11. And McMahon slices this to left, and it is fair. Fourth hit of the night for McMahon. He's going to get another RBI as Doyle will score from first. A three-double night for Ryan McMahon. 12-2 Colorado. Not that it was the biggest problem of the night. Certainly that was on uh, the pitching side, but the offense hasn't done a whole lot, although Kiner Falefa trying to change that, and he has hit it out. His first as a Blue Jay. And Kiner Falefa's hit a lot of balls to right field, and this time he gets the head out on a fastball down around the knees, and he drives it into the seats. First home run, third RBI of the season for the Blue Jays, third baseman. That one will get away from the catcher. Schneider's on his way to third. The throw gets away. And Schneider's on his way home. So that'll be a wild pitch and a throwing air on the catcher Diaz to score the fourth run of the night for the Blue Jays. Uh, good for Davis Snyder. You know, you could get out there in a game like this and just say, okay, well, I'm just going to stay put. But he saw the ball get away from the catcher. And swings at the first pitch. Center field, Brent Doyle and the Rockies have their first ever victory in Toronto in convincing fashion no less. Couple of men on and nobody out. And a ground ball to short. Hamilton zips it a high throw and it's bobbled. Reyes can't haul it in a poor throw by Hamilton and the bases are going to be loaded. And how much more do you have to talk about defensive lapses by the Red Sox. He's just not playing free. It's loaded with three walks you got to get a couple of these guys home. Ward, that one gets to the second baseman, bobbled, not going to turn two, a run comes in.
That's a double play ball, also unable to turn that. Was hit well by Taylor. But still a little bit of a bobble and tried to get on the transfer, only get one out. Pablo Reyes, who was playing third last night, also. Side, but you can still go in the cages and hit. Oh, and that gets up through the middle for a base hit. That's going to drive it a run. Two nothing Halos. Good swing for Aaron Hicks. He stayed with that splitter. It was upstairs just enough where you can hit that hard back up the middle. That's what you got to try to. Full count to Drury. Little tapper. That's going to be a tough play. Only play to first. Another run comes in. RBI for Drury. It is 3-0 Angels. That's a great, great read by Taylor Ward to score on that. He had no play at the plate. As soon as that baseball, the contact play is on, he was ready to go and score. Up the middle. That one's going to get down. They're going to hold up Shotwell right there, but it skips away. Wow. Shotwell's going to come home. He's going to score another miscue by the Red Sox. 4 nothing Halos. And the boos rain down. Raphael, who's got a very good throwing arm, charged that one well. But then it looked like he slipped on his throw, and Koss is unable to cut it off and kicked away from him. Shawnawell just what he needed to do. That is it really well, but Rafael, yeah, he plays it off the wall. That's going to be a single, single only because Rendon had to make sure that it wasn't going to get caught. The way Rafael played it looked like he was going to catch it, but either way, a run comes in 5 nothing. And that's good to see him hit. Taylor Ward hits that one well, well, and way gone! Nothing Angels. What a start to the season Taylor Ward has had. That baseball was crushed at 105 mile per hour off the bat. You can put in a 28 degree launch angle, and it's going to go 422. Popped up. Logan O'Hoppy watching. Oh, and he makes the play. It comes right back to him. And Casually. that'll do it. That's the ball game. Angels blank the Red Sox seven to nothing. Great game, great hitting, but let's give it up for Reed Detmers. Well, I mean, it's all about a, a total team effort. Defense outstanding. Very nice. Hurried by Mets owner Steve Cohen. The crowd is giving Lindor the Trey Turner treatment. Take your slumping player, give him a hand, and hope that it translates into results and Lindor turns on one that sends it foul into the second deck. Well it certainly worked for Turner last year in Philadelphia. I mean it happened on August 4th after that his numbers were crazy good for Trey Turner. Whoa! look at that. My goodness. Boy did he get into one. Welcome back. He didn't waste any time at all. That Severino offering was not walking. Salvi continues to lead. You cannot Sneak a piece of cheese low like that. That's low cheese. You can't sneak it by a hungry Salvi. That was swung on gone. Look at that great low ball hitter. Takes that bottom hand down there and just lets the top hand fall. He could have did that with one hand. For Nimmo with a 2-2 count. And Brandon strokes it into right center for a base hit. Peter around third. He'll come in to score. Nimmo heads for second. Isbell's throw is not in time. Brandon Nimmo ties the game with a two-out double. Pitch he saw in the third inning. And gets curveball and lines up the other way for a base hit. Beatty will come in to score, and the Mets take the lead. Mets getting very aggressive early in the count. And now a broken back flare by Stewart to shallow right. That falls for a hit. Here comes Alvarez. The throw goes to second. It's an RBI single for DJ Stewart. Sacrificed a bat to drive it a run, and it's 3-1 to one New York. Nemo at first and one out. And Lindor takes one the other way for a base hit. Went the other way with the fastball, and the Mets have their eighth hit. It's good that you're going the other way when you're struggling. And this may be a look at it hit the ball up at the plate. This ball was right down the middle a ball he could have pulled but maybe that'll get Francisco going. 
And he hits one toward the gap in right center. Isbell goes back, and he can't get it. It rolls to the wall. In the score is Nimmo. Lindor right behind him. Beatty stops at second with a two-run double. And it's 5-1 to one New York. Isbell was not playing particularly deep, and he was playing toward left center. He tried to make up the ground, but he couldn't quite get there, and Beatty drives in two. Well, change up, down and in. He wanted to get it down and away. And Pete drives one of the gap in left center field, headed toward the wall. It's out of here. Pete Alonso with a line drive. Home run is fourth of the year. Six to one, New York. That's very similar to the home run he hit in Atlanta. Line drive right in the gap, down in the strike zone, and that's where Pete likes it. Out over the plate. 112 miles an hour off the bat. And Frazier lifts one to left field. Should be easy for Nimmo. And the ball game is over. Jorge Lopez gets the final three. Rogers to Riley. Hard hit and by Rivera. That's going all the way down into the corner. Ozzie's lost his helmet. That's always a good sign. And it is one to nothing Atlanta. Riley with an RBI. He fouled off the two seam fastball, and then we see Trevor Rogers come back with a changeup. And so Austin Riley just out front a tiny bit, but all over this pitch as he hits it hard down that left field line and scooting quickly on this artificial surface in Miami. Runner goes from first. This one grounded towards short. They'll come home with it, and the Marlins with another play at the plate. Nice job by Vidal Brujan, but it was right at him, and he's able to come home and get Darno with Acuna going. He didn't have a play at second. It would have been close at first because Albies runs well. And remember, Darno's the runner at third. He doesn't run well. And he's nailed at the plate by a lot. So a heads up play by Vidal Brujan. He does not. And is that the ground ball that he needed? It sure is. 6 4 3 on the double play. Got that ground ball. It was sharply hit, a one hopper, but. Bruhan turns it over to Arise. He gets it over to Berger, and just like that, 6 4 3 and two quick outs. Sharply hit, diving play. Bruhan gets up, throws to first to get the out. Vidal Bruhan with a great play at shortstop to take away a hit. Boy, putting on a defensive show. This one hopper, he lays out. And that I don't think it made any difference that Darno was a runner. He would have gotten most anybody. Strong throwing arm. Look, you don't even see Darno in the picture. And that's a couple of slick plays over there at shortstop for Bruhan tonight. We see them open it up again against Rodgers. Is this going to hit the outfield grass? Yes. Jazz dove for it, but could not come up with a baseball. And Ozzie Albies drives in Atlanta's second run. A heck of an effort from Jazz Chisholm. He talked about him converting to the outfield a year ago. There's certainly been some good things that have happened with him defensively. This is a now Michael Harris, the second bouncing ball, second base, arise, Bruhan to first, double play. Soriano steps. Everybody's ready. Base is loaded. Two down. Three-two pitch is high. Nardi walks in the third run of the game. Marcel to left field. It drops in front of De La Cruz. Two come home, and Atlanta has opened up a 5 0 lead. Well, more big time two out RBIs here from Marcelo Zuna. Make it 11 on the season to stretch out that lead. Ground ball to the right side. Berger stops it. Close. Harris beat it out. And he'll get an RBI for his effort. Six to nothing. And the Braves have batted around. Orlando grounds it toward the middle. Diving stop for Bruhan, but he can't do anything with it. Another run home. Seven to nothing. Up the middle, base hit. Went with the curveball, and Rivera comes through. That'll get the Marlins on the board. Jazz scores three straight hits for the Marlins. Yeah, that one just backed up. More of a flat curveball. Rivera right on it. And gets the Marlins on the scoreboard. 
good night for Marcelo Zuna. A single a walk and then a two RBI hit his last time up in the seventh inning when the Braves played at five runs. This ball is crushed to center field. Kiss it goodbye. Oh my. A big, big fly from the Big Bear. He loves Miami. Well, he smoked it 115 off the bat and 446 feet to center field as he gets a hold of a 92 mile an hour fastball and an absolute no doubter for Marcelo Zuna. Remember when we were talking about the Braves possibly not homering for a third consecutive game. That discussion is over. Bummer ready. He deals. Grounder. Orlando's got it. Braves win. A stone throw. Uppercut it to right. Grossman fairly deep right. Benson plenty of speed. Grossman makes the catch. Benson tag up. Sprints home on a slide. Sack fly RBI. And the Reds lead one zip. First pitch right field. Fraley way back. Against the wall. Fraley crashes into the fence and makes the play. Is he all right? He covered a lot of ground. He comes up with a smile and then a wince. Full count went down swinging his full time. First pitch off the glove, smothered. Remillard late to first and dropped. And Carnacion Strand never broke stride. He slides home. It's 2 nothing. He ripped around third and came crashing home. Best way to pitch him is to add and subtract speed. De La Cruz in the air. Deep right center. Gone. He knew it. That was a strike opposed moment as he pointed to the dugout. And a good amount of Reds fans here give a pretty loud roar. Five nothing. Well, down in the count, no balls and two strikes. Pitcher like Flexen is going to try to trick you. He throws a changeup, but it catches way too much of the plate. And right now, Ellie is seeing it big. Pitch. Oh, this ball is hammered. High, deep. You can kiss that baby. Way goodbye. A three-run home run for Ellie De La Cruz. Oh, my. That got out of here, and I mean a snap of the finger. On an 0-2 pitch, no less. Ellie De La Cruz never comes up. Stevenson to right. Grossman way back, and that's gone. Stevenson sucks a big fly. The Reds a 6-0 edge. Good crop of the next generation of stars making a name for themselves. Here's Robbie Grossman. Hammers that down the left field line. They're waving in Remillard. He's going to score easily. And the White Sox on the board here in the third. An RBI double for Robbie Grossman. And Cincinnati's lead is cut to five. That's his first run driven in as a member of the White Sox. Up on a third strike and chase a pitch that you can't possibly hit and make yourself an easy out. Slap to right. Is that deep enough? Grossman gathers Martini tag throw goes to the plate sack fly 7-1 Reds broke his bat skips in the right Stevenson home green light India no throw and Carnacion Strand plates a pair 9-1 Cincinnati Espinal Opposite way through base hit. That's another two runs. Fraley scores. De La Cruz scores. Santiago Espinal has doubled his hit total as a red tonight alone. It's 11 to 1. Lifted left side. De La Cruz. The Cincinnati Reds come to Chicago. The number one villain for these Astros, and he serves one into right. That's a base hit. Another RBI for Garcia.
and the Rangers take that first lead of the game. Well, you just have to wonder when Odolis shows up at this ballpark, he knows he's going to do some damage. Williams and things like that. Oh, there's a homer. Tucker drives one deep to right center field, and Baggy called it off the bat into the ball. That snaps an 0 for 11 for Tuck as he crushes one to tie it up at one. It's huge for us right there. Get us right back on the board here after they scored one. And it's big for Tuck, obviously. King Tuck with his third home run of the season. Payoff on the way. That's high. A bases loaded walk. Third walk of the inning. And the Rangers retake the lead. It's 2-1. to one. It just seems like France is a little, little uncomfortable out there right now trying to locate his pitches. And Langford batting with the bases loaded. Hits this ball in the air. Out to center. Left center. That one drops in. Base hit. And then it's bobbled. Here comes a second run. It was a late start from third by Garcia, but he'll score. Woo. A two-run blooper by Langford, and the Rangers lead 4-1. to one. What a clutch hit right here by the young right-handed hitter. On 30 pitches for the inning, the 1-1. That ball's hit a ton. Deep out to right. Tucker can only watch. It is gone! Upper deck! Heim with a massive blast to right field. And cracks this one open early for the Rangers. It's 7-1. Boy, Jonah Heim really gets into this pitch from France. France challenges him with that fastball. One, two. And Carter hits that one into right field. Base hit. Simeon scores. RBI single for Evan Carter. He drives in his fourth run of the year, and the Rangers on top, eight to one. But well, France comes back with another breaking ball right here. Ground ball towards the middle, through in the center field. Astro score a run to make it eight to two. Mauricio Dubon with an RBI single. Okay, just keep doing it right here. Jeremy Pena going first to third as the Astros make it a six-run game. That's good base running right there. That's doing what you're supposed to do. Keep the line moving. Rangers infield back here with one out. Jake sends one through the middle. That'll be an RBI base hit. Eight to three game. There you go. Not trying to do too much. Nope. That's what you yeah. said. Take it through the middle. Take it the other way. The count from Kuno. A little punch shot into right center. Can anybody get there? Here comes Tucker. Sliding catch by Tuck for the final out of the inning. Kyle Tucker, nice play for the final out. About the way he plays, and he hits this one into right field, a base hit. Carter around third, the ball's bobbled in right. And Garcia drives in another run against Houston. His second RBI of the ball game, and it's 9-3. to three. There's guys like Adolis Garcia. They're not trying to pull the ball. When they've got runners in scoring position, a base hit right here gets it done. You could drive a Mack truck through the right side right there. Evan Carter coming around third base. He wasn't going to get thrown out by Tucker anyway. Yeah, with the bases loaded in his career. And this one on the ground, second base. Altuve bobbled it. And he'll throw to first to get the one out. Rangers add another run. It's 10-3. to three. And again, the Rangers scoring in double digits. This is something that they did so often last year. This ball just gets in on the hands of Jonah on the second hop. Here's the payoff, and Walsh hits this one sharply into right field. Base hit, one run is in. They'll wave Langford. He scores without a throw. Walsh drives in a pair, and the Rangers have a dozen tonight. It's 12 to 3. Jared Walsh, very patient up here, works the count into his favor, and then gets that slider down and in. As he rips it through the right side for a couple of RBIs. Here's, well, now you do. When I used to. Oh, Tucker! Was a Stand and watch him. Nice job. Deep to right field. His second of the night. That's into the second deck. 12 to 5 on Tuck's second home run. Kyle Tucker.
doubles up his home run total on the season tonight with two home runs. Now he has four matching Jordan Alvarez. That's one way to pay back a hit by pitch. Sure. Oh, the first one's beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. You got a little confident. Hey, Dubon's got himself another RBI. Dubon with a two RBI night. That's now 12 to 6 game as Singleton crosses the plate. There you go. Grant Anderson, the new pitcher, greeted with a first pitch base hit. Well, the Astros still tacking on runs here. Yeah, it's kind of what we talked about earlier about getting in their bullpen, get more bats against them. Big fly here makes it a three run game. This one's hooked towards the corner. That's going to be down for a hit. In comes Pena. Dubon is going to be held up. He runs, runs right through the stop sign and scores without a throw. Yeah. Gary Pettis was holding him up the whole way, and Dubon kept going. <laughs> the play was kind of in front of Dubon. Yeah. So he just took it upon himself to run through the stop sign. Yeah. You see Gary Pettis right here hold him up. Is something. This one smashed it first. What a diving stop by Walsh. is sort of first in time. And they get Tucker. Jared Walsh with a sparkler at first base. And they call third base the hot corner. But Val, it's like just as hot, baby. Two hits. One-two pitch. And that's in the air right field. Garcia angles over. And that'll do it. The Rangers take the opener in Houston. 12. Check swing from Gallo. He buried him. And Paul Blackburn, a pair of strikeouts. To end the first inning, his hot start continues. Strike Beauty. three call. John Lipka took a look at it. Bladé didn't like the call. And that's the challenge for him right now is getting the barrel on the baseball. Here's a 2-1. Hit high and deep to right. Thomas takes a look. Up it goes, and it is gone. Lawrence Butler connects on his first of the year, and it's one nothing Oakland. Uh, you had mentioned exit velocity, yeah. uh, one thirteen off the bat. That's way above average, and it got out of here in a hurry. And maybe just that little bit of familiarity. Oh, oh, hurt me! Crushed. All the ball. Next stop, zone four. Irvin fought the law, and the law won. Could be the biggest pitch of the night. 0-2, struck him out. Winker launching one in the year to right. Butler Gary. watching it. See you later. And in the wee hours, the Naps have tied it. Jesse Winker, stay hot, kid. 79 on that slider, 101 off the bat. And we got ourselves a ball game. One, two. Shot the other way. That's going to drop down. Schumann waved home. Here comes the play. Butler answers the call and his first career walk off happens on every day for his baseman for the Cubs for a long time and he settles it that ball hit hard but it's caught back footed leap by Ty France to make the catch on a liner off the bat of Bush get up get on up I saw, a hot, I saw a little hops over there everybody feeling good and blowing a bubble at the same well, time the, yeah you gotta get the got, bubble uh, yeah Oh he hit him. Gosh. Jordan Wicks hits Urias with a pitch. And the Mariners are gifted a run with two outs. Rodriguez has only had one extra base hit so far. But he lines this ball toward right center. Bellinger comes in, slides, and knocks it down. Two-run score and a base hit for Julio Rodriguez. Garver and Moore come in. Bellinger lucky to keep that in front of him as the Mariners take a 3-0 lead. Just too strong of an individual being able to muscle it out with two RBIs. That ball would have skipped by Bellinger. It's three runs at least. Off to the races. 31 RBIs coming into that situation. And now Ty France slaps one the other way for an RBI base hit. It scores Crawford, and the Mariners break through with two outs in the fourth against Jordan Wicks. Wayne, you just can't walk that many people in the inning. 
especially you're lining yourself up for trouble coming into the teeth of their lineup. San Francisco and Jordan Montgomery to the Diamondbacks. Smiley has the runner caught. Throw to second base. It is in time as Polanco gets caught stealing on Drew Smiley pickoff attempt. Step up, take that throw, and make sure you get inside and get away from the runner's lane to allow Honda to be able to night provide that nice tag. They respect and appreciate you, so I'll never forget those times. Fly ball looping toward the left field line. Long run Swanson and Happ, and it's Ian Happ with a sliding catch. Dansby gave Happ a look like I'm not going to be able to get there. That's your ball, and Happ made that catch and slide look very easy. Backhand. Dansby just a couple steps away and great focus and ability. Popped up. Urias chases coming in. A catch. What a play by Luis Urias. Luis has been all over the diamond lane. He's been outstanding defensively tonight. What a route. Knew that ball is in foul territory, but in no man's land. Hustles over there. Playoffs by one game. You look back at those ball games saying, hey, we gotta make, we gotta get that down. And Maria stabs another. France dropped the ball. The runner is safe at first and a run scores. It looked like some collision interference though by Jan Gomes as the throw was coming. And Ty France talking to the umpire right now, but as it stands, Gomes is aboard and Nico Horner comes home. There's a long fly ball from Michael Bush, and the Cubs aren't done yet. A long home run to make it a four to two ball game. But I tell you, Wayne, that young man can get his foot down, and he worked the count. He's been giving quality at bats all game long. And this is his second hard hit baseball, and then it kept challenging him with the fastball, and he could turn around that velocity. And so, if you're a Cubs fan, you have to be super excited for Michael Bush. Two balls, two strikes now on Talkman. Soft bouncer. Polanco has it. The Seattle Mariners take game one of this series. Swing and a high fly ball. Belted deep left. Nolan Arenado says hello, Phoenix. 3 0 Cardinals. Oh, did that feel good? Chip, you know a ball is hit well when the left fielder doesn't even move. Guriel just stuck there. Look at this reaction a little hop, skip, and a jump. First home run for Nolan Arenado since August of last year, and you know that one felt fantastic. A lot of room in left center for Brendan. The pitch is hit high in the air toward right. Back goes Gritchick. He's got plenty of room. Win at third is going to tag. Here he comes. Scott's going to make it to third, standing up. ABC Baseball for the Cardinals who lead 4 0. Donovan's ninth RBI. Third, two outs. Slam to center. Corbin Carroll on the move. Riding grab by Corbin Carroll. And that ends the second. St. Louis gets one more. They take a. Swing and a drive. Lars Newtbar break out the tape measure. You asked earlier, what will Lars Newtbar do to this lineup? Well, we're getting a chance to see it. This is a bomb. Your Chevy pitch track gets a four seam fastball, middle in, 438 foot shot <laughs> from Newt. Lined into right field, Walker on the run, dives and makes the catch. Throw back towards second, it's going to be a double play. Newman wandered too far off. Great catch by Jordan Walker and a heads up play to double up the D backs as we go to the fourth. <laughs> Evolution. But you raise an excellent point. This one wants to get down and it does in the gap. Blaze is blazing. Look at those orange cleats coming around third. Kevin Newman with his second hit and the Diamondbacks are on the board. Base hit. Newman coming home. Marte drives in a run, and it's six to two. All right. Worked the count, got the count full, deliver the RBI nine. Good patient at bat that time. Finally got a ball he could drive into left field and brings home Kevin Newman with the second D backs run of the game. 
Up the middle, base hit. Marte will score. Gurriel comes through, and it's 6-3. to three. Gino not waiting around, pokes it toward the Cardinal bullpen. This one's carrying out there, and it's gone. Eugenio Suarez, and we are tied at six. Get him on, get him over, and get him in. That'll work. Up with a man aboard, full count pitch. Lifted toward left center. Carroll on the run, sprinting to the warning track, to the wall. That ball is off the base of the wall. It ricochets back to the infield. Donnie on his way to third. Here's the relay. He's going to be safe. He got in. How he beat that throw, I'll never know. But Donovan in safe. Served in the center of base hit. He went down and stroked that baby, and the Cardinals are back in front. Oh, does that feel good? A two-strike hit for Goldschmidt at 7-6. to six. The Cardinals continue to fight back. He goes down fishing for this changeup under the zone, just able to get the barrel to it and drive it into center field. Plaza tire service pitch strike. That's one hand on that. Just almost snagged by Mantiply also. Just missed it. Scoring runs in multifaceted ways. There's a shot inside the bag fair. Wynn does it again. Siani will score. Mason around second. He's going to turn and burn and go to third. He'll make it there standing up. It's a triple and an 8-6 game. How about this piece of hitting right here from Mason Wynn? And drives it down the line for a triple. Now Victor Scott shoots one towards center. Carroll the catch. Here comes the runner tagging. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's going to be cut off. And the Cardinals have hit homers. They He got him. Swing and a miss. Hell. High drive. Deep left field for Machado. Back is Taylor looking up. It is gone. Manny Machado with a two-run home run. Padres take a 2-0 lead in the first. What a way to start the series in L.A. Oh, and it's got that sound. That sound that means we're going to need to do baseball. 1-0 pitch. Smacked to left center field. That's got a chance. It is gone. Shohei Otani, welcome back home. And still in the front part of his career, he has tied Hideki Matsui for the most major league home runs by a Japanese-born player. It's, oh, this one's crushed right here. Talk about home runs. There's a second home run in his career, Donna Mudd. Ha Sung Kim. Padres get their two-run lead back again on top three to one. Ha Sung Kim turns on it nicely for the solo shot. They haven't put the whole thing together in their 10 and 5. Right. But it's That's a shot down the line, hooking into the corner and gone. Screamer that just gets over the wall. And we're playing home run derby tonight. The Bats, who popped out his first time. Hammers this ball. It's headed to Pasadena. Team leading sixth of the year for Mookie Betts, and the Dodgers are in front five to three, just like that. Jolted to left center. This will stay in the yard. Merrill dives onto the warning track, makes the catch in left center. That's Jackson Merrill. Nice play. Runner first, two out, and Teoscar Hernandez swings at the first pitch, pokes one deep the other way. Tatis going back. There's another long ball. The Dodgers have hit four home runs in the first three innings against Michael King. High fly ball to deep right field. Hernandez going back at the wall. He leaps and that ball is gone. Jake Cronenworth hits a home run. The Padres get their third home run of the game. Seven to four. Busano 0 for two tonight. Lifts his ball in shallow left field. Muncy's out. Caught off by Betts. Near the sidewall. Into the netting. He caught it. I don't know how, but he made the catch.
<laughs> Look how happy he is. I mean, that, that's the thing. That's like, you know, you're a little league kid. You go and make a play. It's like, yeah, look, I got it, Mom. Look, I got it. I mean, that's how he reacted. Hunter goes at first. Here is a grounder to third. Well, keep him out of the DP. Throw to first and scoring from third base is Merrill. And it's now seven to five. So Bogarts will pick up an RBI on the ground out, but because they started Tyler Wade, stay out of that DP. Fly ball headed towards left field. Back goes Chris Taylor. He's looking up and is gone. Tie game. Fernando Tatis Jr. loves hitting at Dodger Stadium. Two run shot ties it up. Seven aside. Through the left side into left field, a base hit for Jackson Merrill. Here comes a Zokar. Padres take the lead in the 11th. 8 7. Jackson Merrill got down 0 and 2. Betts it's a fly ball to center field. Jackson Merrill's out there waiting. He will make the catch and the Padres win in 11.